and, and it's certainly true right. up to a point. But, but what about all the other refractions of the mirror that he's feeding us? Uh, what is true? They're all true. Well, you are asked, in terms of uh, talking about the truth, the truth cannot be established because we have limited personal, personal point of view. The only, the only perspective we ever have is the one of the narrator. However, okay, as an, and I don't know if this occurred to you, I started this, this um, Swan Villa being very serious, and as it was developing, I found myself laughing more and more often because just stuff is happening to this guy that really oughtn't to be happening. And the point at which I really laughed the hardest was uh, at, the, at the end when the, when the carpet comes, okay? So, so the whole, his whole life is about to fall apart. Uh, Rosa is about to have an abortion. I think at this point she's, she's deciding not to have it. And the dog failed the, the test. And Re, Re, Regina, Regina is this, that, the other thing. And he can't sell the house and he's dependent on his wife. And the wife has just gone off. And the Bundesbahn and the, and the, and the railway delivers a plastic sausage. Sausage, right. You have, you have to see what Walzer does with one word, in which he transforms a cash on for which he has just paid about 9,000 marks, which is a lot of money in 1977, into a plastic sausage. You can't beat this because at this point, this carpet, with its life falling apart, isn't worth more than a plastic sausage. Unbelievable. And that is, that is what Walzer is good about. Limoges is at the very right time commenting on what the value of this carpet is to him at this point. Well, and that's good. That is what's good about but it. But his life isn't falling apart. Okay, Clive, so, one yeah. comment, and Virginia, and you? This is almost Sholem Aleicha. Wow, I find that fine. But, but I was... Right with his wife? Yeah, but I was, but I, but I was, I was thinking about that there is, um, there is, I mean, some people have written as Shlemir from Kai Kamisa, but I don't, I don't, I don't see that. I do think there is a Luftmensch kind of um, character to this person who has to make something out of nothing. He has to make money out of nothing. Why does he defend the real estate profession, uh, the, the, the makler beruf? <laughs> because it depends only on the person who is doing it. Just like the writer. To be a, a, a real estate agent, to be a makla, and to be a writer is very similar for Walzer because both of them have to put their own personality into the marketplace. They have to sell something that another person doesn't really want. And we always look at it very suspiciously. What you have to offer, I'm going to have to criticize that. So Valza is really milking that comparison basically for, for, for all its worth. So the critical response to what you have to offer, that it depends only on you, that you can never reveal yourself fully as a mock, when you cannot say anything, you have to say personal things in order to get people hope, but you can never say who you truly are. So these comparisons certainly flow into this book, Virginia. Well, the fact that the rug comes in plastic, there's such a, a contrast between this modern cheap, cheesy plastic and the beautiful old rug. And then the other thing I wanted to ask, in um, Flea de Pferd, yeah, is this Klaus some sort of a Faust figure? In a way, why do you? How do you see that? Well, could you do that? I was turning to him and telling him having grandiose ideas. He could perform better. He could do this. He could do that. I'm not seeing it. Can you guys see that? And the false figure? I am not sure. Let's work. On it. Let's work this out a little bit. So we have these. We have these four characters in uh, in in Feeling of Fear. So we have Klaus, who is with. Hell, and we have Hell, who is with, uh, what's her name, Sabine? Sabina. 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 I was going to say that in Dutch, Sabine, because I'm a best friend of Sabine. Sabina. <coughs> Sabina. Okay, so we have here, and of course, good. Now, what do we do with this? So this is Helena, actually. Okay, so this is your constellation. And there's not very much happening. If you're looking at the flow of scenes and nine chapters, there's a very neat alteration, indoor, outdoor, indoor, outdoor. Uh, it's, very, it's very well constructed, and the beginning goes back to the end. 
and we have uh, the Una Hörte Begebenheit, uh, which is the, the novella theory, which goes back to Goethe, Goethe's, no, Goethe's novella about the tiger. Uh, so we have the, the unheard of event that triggers everything. So we have certain symbolic happenings, we have, uh, we have the uh, walk in the woods, we have the uh, runaway horse, and we have the storm on, on the ocean. I mean, the stuff is I mean, it's actually very mechanically constructed. You almost don't see it because the language is subordinate dialogues. So it's actually not really dialogues because they're mainly indirect speech, but they, they appear to be dialogue because the language is so extraordinary, so vivacious that it puts you into uh, mise en scène, and it puts you right into, into the scene. So but what is happening in that, in that novel, in that novella? What's he, what's he doing with all this? Why did he write this? And what is the experiment, the Gedanken experiment, that he's cooking up here. I mean, you, you basically have to do something with the characters, and that's really your own, your own choice. I'm glad you're sitting there, because now you're sitting my line of sight, which is very good. So, okay, so what's going on? So are these contrasts, are there elective affinities? What's, what's, what's happening there? And that would go back to something that you said at the very beginning, right? Here's Anders. Uh, just the beginning somewhere, uh, the impression I had after yeah. perhaps reading half of it, yeah. that Klaus is uh, the missing half or the missing part. <coughs> Uh, the missing part, that's very good. So you do not see them as a contrast, right? You see right. them actually as maybe mirror images? <coughs> yes. As it's, mirror images? It's book. Missing half, how? Could you develop that more? It's book in a way to see how Klaus remembers so many things good. about, um, I keep forgetting. Uh, about the school? Helm, Helm, Helmut, sorry. <laughs> of Helmut's early life. Right. That's the point right. they've spent right. together. You go to the opening of chapter two, okay, which is actually very interesting. It starts very rare for Walter. It starts with the word plötzlich, suddenly. Suddenly, a very, plötzlich and augenblick are two very important words in Wilhelm Meister, in Goethe's Wilhelm Meister. Uh, Augenblick is, is essential, and suddenly, it's like an epiphany, suddenly, out of the blue, so they're sitting there in Kübelingen at the little promenade and nothing much is happening, and he gets really bothered that his wife wants to sit all the way in front, and you know, it's like right up under the, everybody's, you know, bellies and boobs, and he doesn't really want to be there, because he would like to sit all the way back, but he is put way, pushed way up in front, and boom, suddenly an appearance, and this appearance, this Klaus, actually very interesting, the guy called Klaus Buch, yeah? yeah. It's almost like Klaus Buch, and he is not an open book. He appears there with a shirt, you know, if I was to unbutton this, I would look like him, but he appears there with a shirt all the way unbuttoned, and he appears to be very open. But what he does is he parades his physicality. Okay, so we know this guy, this Klaus, even though he's called Buch, is certainly not an open book. In fact, it's a closed book, Clausus. Yeah, and Clausus actually, if you, Klaus, or Klaus, he is actually the most concealed person you could possibly think of. So you are actually presented with a character who is a contradiction in, in himself. Because on the one hand, he presents physicality, sexuality, youth, success, everything is easy for him. And we learn at the very end that what we see is not what is. That there's a contradiction in here. You want to jump in? Well, I was just you, thinking um, it could be argued that his memories about Helmut are completely fictional because Helmut doesn't ascend yeah. to them. But at one point, when he's trying to remember what the physics professor said downstairs, he says, you know, I, what, what I need, he has, it, this is not to pick up what, what, what Andrew said, he has very physical memory. And when he remembers something, it is like a puppet show, like a puppet theater. Everything comes to life, all the persons come to life, and that memory is triggered by the exact words, by the mojures. It's like a plastic wrist, yeah? You need to have something as plastic, as precise, as graspable, as, as imaginable as this word plastic wrist in which that, the, 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 the rug became, the plastic sausage. So his memory gets triggered by le mot juste, and that mot juste 
is provided by this guy. And we know because he says, he said, coming, he says to Klaus Sister, Helmut, help me, help me, I need to have this memory and to get it. And then we never expect that Helmut actually remembers because he says, for me, it's ein Schädelstätten Zustand. Okay, Schädelstätte is a Calvary, Golgotha, Calvary. So for me, to be in memory is to be at Golgotha or to be at uh, Calvary. Kalvarian Zustand, a, a, a state of being at Golgotha, which re represents, of course, the pinnacle of suffering. Not a, when you're just on the brink of being saved, just on the just like what, what that's what Calvary represents. You are at the pinnacle of suffering, but you have the possibility of being saved through resurrection. We're talking Christian universe here, obviously. Okay, so for him, it's a Schädelstätten Zustand, whereas for him, it's the highest of physical realization when you can remember precisely and lively. But he needs, and this goes, this is in the first, in the second chapter when he, when, when he appears, it's like the second page or so, when he says, it's like the Kriegsveteranen. It's like veterans of war. Again, this is war, like what you remember, the life that you had before, it's like a war that you were fighting. They need each other to reaffirm that what they lived was real. So your impression that they are actually in need of each other, these two, they are very different people. They are in fact opposites, but they are complementary opposites. They need each other. Yes. I was going to say, I see them as opposites, and in fact, he tells you they're opposites. Look at what they're They're absolutely happens. opposites. One sure. smokes, the other doesn't. One absolutely. drinks, the other. And did you get that? There's a fabulous line. I mean, it is amusing where. Uh, uh, I'm glad where you agree Helmut, with that. Where Helmut and <laughs> Sabina talk about reading Dessard and Mazok, <laughs> and, and, and Klaus and uh, uh, Sabina are reading Herbs and Weeds. <laughs> and in fact, this, uh, and in fact, I grew up. My mother, my, my grandmother, is from Switzerland, and she spent a lot of time in, in this area, which actually my mother now lives uh, in Wasserburg, in, in precisely in Mitten, where Schwanenhaus is actually is actually set. So I know this area like like the back of my hand. And this book that is mentioned by this by this father, father Künzel, Ruth und Urruth. I grew up with that. Really? My, yes, my, mother did, like my grandmother did medicine from that book. It's a real book. And going out and collecting all the stories, it's a real thing that people would be doing there. And, and this book actually actually exists. And to see on the one hand, one reads Kierkegaard, and the other one reads Hut and Uhut. <laughs> it's actually very funny. It's actually a, 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 a Swiss But Swiss also, story. one of them, I, I believe Helmut is a man of the forest. He makes it very clear. He loves the forest. And Which one? Klaus. Helmut. Oh, Helmut. And Klaus is a man of the water. He loves the ocean or the sea. I mean, oh, forest, not forest. I heard forest. Okay, forest, I was thinking. Yes, that is true. So on the one hand, so we have here the waves, huh? And here we have the trees, which is also why you have your God of that, right? Okay, which of course is always like compared to, I'm sorry for the Jews, but you know, so forgive me to make those crosses here, so the Tellen, but here is your, here's your forest. But, but even as Helmut wants to lead them through the forest, it is Helmut who succeeds. To get the horse, you mean? No, even who finds the restaurant, they get lost oh. when, they, when, when they have their walk. Okay, so now what about the horse? Huh? And you're bored by it, okay, do it anyway. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's untrammeled, you know, vitality and sexuality. Vitality, yeah, okay, good, excellent. Now related to the water. Well, the wind, the wind, the wind blows the boat. It's untrammeled vitality and sexuality. There's no okay. controlling it. All right, and now if you're, connect, if you're thinking about uh, Schwanenhaus, you would know that the uh, Helene, Helene character is the Barbie character there, and she is a, surf, a surfer, and the German word for surfing is Wellenreiten. You're riding the waves. There isn't that much difference between riding a boat and riding a horse. And in fact, it is made clear in, in Schwanenhaus that 